Hi there, Teacher Karen here. Not too long ago, I read the book, The Lion Inside. And it had the mouse who longed to be like the big, tough, strong lion. He thought if he could only be like the lion, everything would be perfect. And a lot of times, people want to be big, tough, and strong. Leaders, popular kids. But is really that the best way to be? Is that what we want in a leader or king? Hmm. Maybe this book will help us decide. And it's called The King of the Birds by Helen Ward. And she did the illustrations as well. And I really think they're great. So make sure you get up close so you can see the pictures. So grab your kiddos, get comfy and cozy, and we'll read. Huh? There goes my cat. So here we go. A long, long time ago, some old, but not necessarily wise, birds decided that they should have a king. However, they could not settle on how or who to choose. So messengers were sent out to announce a grand gathering. Big birds, small birds, North birds, south birds, up birds, down birds, day and night birds. Ear and hair birds, here and there birds. From everywhere birds were summoned. Eventually, all the birds were gathered together. The oldest, and possibly wisest, of the old birds called the conference to order and announced their problem. How do we choose a king? So here's the oldest, and possibly wisest, announcing to the others, how do we choose a king? There was a quietness of a deliberation, consideration, and thought. Then came the answers. It should be the biggest bird, said one. The smallest bird, said another. The fastest bird, said a third. The fastest runner. The longest neck, legs, tail. The biggest beak, egg, feet. The most colorful, the most tuneful. The best nest, said the weaver bird. The most abundant, said the sparrows. The bird with the most spots, said the guinea fowl. The bird that looks most like a branch, said the branch. Me, me, me said a zebra finch. Before long, there were as many answers as there were birds. And so the birds still had their problem. Only now it was bigger, noisier, and more bad tempered than before. Finally, after much disgruntled compromising, it was agreed the bird that could fly the highest would be king. And because not enough birds could agree on any other plan, the competition began. Who do you think's gonna win? Let's find out. All together, the birds took to the sky. They flapped, bounded, leapt, and lumbered into the air like a rising roof of wings. I love this picture. The struggling broad-bellied birds, the fluttering finches and sparrows, the lazy flap of the gulls and the slim-winged sea crossers, the busy wings of ox and the invisible beats of hummingbirds all rose higher and higher 
a column of birds circling up to the sky. But above them all came the lonely eagle's patient flap among the wisps of cloud. The eagle must be king, said a smaller bird to another, and so a murmur spread slowly through the crowds. But just when the eagle could fly no higher, a wren crept out of its hiding place amongst the feathers of the eagle's back and, beating its little wings furiously, it rose into the cold, thin air, higher than the eagle, higher than all the other birds. And so it was decided. The wren and the eagle almost fell back to the ground where the wren hid hastily in the tangle of a hedge, safe from the eagle's angry eye. So the wren became king of the birds for as the oldest and definitely the wisest, birds agreed having the highest flyer for a king was one thing, having the cleverest was even better. The End The King of the Birds